All right, this is episode seven of Strangers, a Celtic podcast. I go by Larbird33 on Reddit, Twitter, Instagram. And typically with this podcast, what I do is I call up various NBA fans, usually Celtics fans, and I talk to them about the Celtics. Usually these are people that I've never actually had a conversation with, except for online. This episode's going to be a little different. I'm going to call up all sorts of people. We've got the trade deadline right around the corner. I'm starting to record this around 7 p.m. East Coast time. I'm sure there's going to be lots of news even as I'm recording this, but I'm going to call up lots of different fans and see what people are thinking about right now with this trade deadline. If you like this content, please subscribe to my channel. All right, let's, uh, let's dive right into it. What's up? What's up, man? ZD Music. Yeah, ZD Music. <laughs> I think you probably heard one of my podcasts at one point. I think you said you wanted to be on, right? I did, yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm trying to do this quick thing where I just call up people and just they tell me, like, what's on your mind with this upcoming uh, deadline? You know, I, I'm getting anxiety about that um, Sixers trade from yesterday. So uh, it's the Sixers got Tobias Harris, right, and Boban. So they got those two, and then they gave up basically like nothing. Like in terms of players, they gave up what Landry Shamit and uh, the other guy, and and they gave up some picks. So I I haven't been concerned about the Sixers really, even though I know they're a good team. We seem to always have their number, like as Celtics fans. Uh, and now with this inclusion of Tobias Harris and then Boban off the bench at like seven three, getting a little concerned about that matchup in the future. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be that easy anymore because that starting lineup of Ben Simmons and Redick and Harris and uh, Embiid is tough. And uh, Butler, Jimmy Butler too. Yeah, that's going to be a brutal lineup to deal with. And it's interesting following Twitter and everything. People are underselling Tobias Harris. I'm seeing a lot of people who are pushing this campaign. They're like, is he better than Marcus Morris? And I, I get what they're trying to say from like his, his shooting percentages. They're trying to say if per 36 that Marcus Morris's stats are very similar to Tobias Harris. But, right. I mean, this guy is really, really good. He's averaging 21 points, 50% shooting, 43% from three. Right. He, This is, uh, I think he was, of all players who were averaging over 20 points per game, He's has the lowest uh, usage rate. Oh, of course. So And, like, the main thing that Philly needed was someone to uh, spread the floor for them. So, yeah, man, I'm, I'm with you on that. That's going to be an interesting thing. Um, to see how that plays out. They're still going to have to build chemistry, and it could, right. could still backfire for them because those both Harris and Butler are expiring contracts. But That's true. That's um, true. I'm hoping it backfires. I, I wish really nothing but pain for the Sixers <laughs> franchise because I hate them so much. So I really hope it backfires. But, I, I mean, some people are saying that, like, that bench is going to be real thin, and that's been their problem all year. But I don't – I mean, I know it's a different team, but the Warriors bench is real thin. And that doesn't really seem to be problematic for them because their starting lineup is just so insane. Yeah. And I know the Sixers starting lineup isn't as insane as that Warriors lineup, but it's still that's an impressive starting lineup that they have now. Uh, and I don't know if it matters that much in the playoffs that they have kind of a thin bench. Uh, so I don't know. It's, it's a little concerning. I think I'm with you on that. It's usually yeah. it's, you know, ty- it's talent, like the most talent you have matters once it comes to the playoffs in that starting yeah. lineup is that's when they tighten up rotations and players start playing ridiculous minutes like we've had rondo i think average like 43 minutes in one playoff right. for us right so once right. they're yeah. starting five is averaging 40 plus minutes and jimmy butler has done this in the past where he averages crazy minutes in the playoffs if they have chemistry that's gonna be a tough one that's tough yeah, yeah. no and maybe they'll run into some chemistry issues we've had this year but probably not i mean i think guys are kind of unique with Hayward and, and everything with that. So I don't know if they're going to hit chemistry issues Some, uh, or not. All right, man. Well, thanks. This is a, a, just a quick taste. Hopefully I can get you on for like a longer yeah. podcast down the line. I, I appreciate you giving me your perspective on that. Of course, man. Anytime. <laughs> All right. I'll talk to you later. All right. See All right, you, man. Bye. Yo, man. What's up? What's up? Good boy 12. <laughs> what's up, Larry? How you doing, man? Good, man. So you're, uh, you're a Sixers fan. And I, am, I am, unfortunately. Somehow you found my podcast. I think it was one of the one times I posted it on the NBA sub, and I think you actually listened to it. So thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I just uh, half my time is spent just perpetually refreshing our NBA new. So I see pretty much everything. So I saw it and I was like, I'll I'll listen to it for like two minutes just to laugh at these Celtics fans. And it was a good podcast. I liked it. All right, thanks, man. You're one of the knights of new. It's people like you that help curate the you know NBA sub. Oh. So thanks. <laughs> yeah, doing God's work. So yeah, uh, just doing quick thing here. Just what's on your mind with this trade deadline? I just talked to someone, uh, a Celtic fan. They're pretty pretty nervous about this Tobias Harris trade from a Celtic perspective. Why? 
because uh, they think it's going to be uh, it's going to be trouble. What? Well, quickly, what's your take on that? How do you feel about that trade for your team? I'm just so depressed, man. Really? I, I really am. Like the, uh, last year, we ended the year on a 16 win uh, winning streak. We won the first round. We had this young team with tons of potential that could just grow together and really compete for like a decade. And fast forward like eight months, we've traded everyone away for two um, two guys who are about to be free agents. And I just – I think the ownership just really wanted to win now, like just got in their minds that now's the time to compete. And if you look at it, most of the time you don't win a championship with your best player being younger than 28, like, like Shaq won when he was 28. Jordan, LeBron, I just don't see us winning until Joel Embiid's in his prime. Sure. So we've made all these panic moves to win now. We gave away we gave away more for Tobias Harris than you guys gave away for Kyrie. Like we gave away more for Tobias Harris than you guys uh, than uh, than uh, what the uh, OKC gave up for uh, Paul, Paul George. What was, so, what was the main ass you guys gave up? Was that Miami pick, right? It's the Miami pick. It was our best late round pick um, since Lou Williams in uh, Landry Shamet. And then we gave up our pick, two solid seconds. Um, I just, it's just a lot to give up for a guy who's about to be an expiring contract. And I just don't know who we're bidding, who we're bidding against. I just think we have an inexperienced front office. Um, Elton Brand only experience was running a G League team for a couple months. And Jerry West saw that, knew he was dealing with an inexperienced front office, and kind of took advantage. Like, I really think if we just waited to the deadline and said, listen, we'll give you two of our picks and two good seconds, like the um, Knicks or the Bulls pick or the Kings pick, and um, build a package around that, I think they would have said, they would have said yes instead of just let him, let him walk in a couple months. Um, I think we just – have a way too focused on winning now and have traded away literally everything um, for two guys who are gonna are good right now and I think I think um, I think we'll be good for a couple years but I mean wow. I just if we see, if we keep both of them that's our team TJ McConnell is gonna be the best rotation player <laughs> we have. So I'll say, as a Celtic fan, it feels it feels weird to be talking down the this depressed Sixer fan. But I mean, I I get why they did it. I get why they did it because if you think about, um, so I I I thought about this a couple months ago with the Sixers. They had those expiring contracts and they had that Miami pick. One thing about that Miami pick is it's not a guarantee to be a great pick. That's a ways away. And Pat Riley's a good GM. I had a guy on my podcast that came on uh, Eddie Twenty who kind of awoken me to this that that pick might not be great even if it's unprotected that might not be a great pick um it is still an unprotected pick though so that is something to give up so my whole thing was there was all these guys i was thinking about that you guys could target to help your shooting but Mm -hmm. the thing that was in my mind is that you guys can still position yourself to go after a max free agent this summer alongside uh mb simmons and um and Butler, if you could keep mm-hmm. Butler as well. So I didn't see you guys making that trade to bring on salary that was going to be an issue heading forward. But the thing about this Tobias Harris trade is, even if uh, Harris and even if Butler walk, you guys now have a ton of cap space to build around Embiid and Simmons. I'm. Ah. It makes sense for you guys to take this gamble when the East is kind of wide open. I think you should be a little more excited about it. You guys have a killer starting five right now. It could be very dangerous. I mean, we have a talented t- starting five. I don't. I just don't think our starting starting five um, really fits together. Our biggest problem is point of attack defense, point guard defense. Okay. We literally have no one who can guard a point guard, and Tobias Harris isn't going to help that. Uh, secondly, I mean, we we shouldn't have traded away our entire team just for cap space. Um, I would be what I would really love. I I, I would be okay with the Tobias trade if we went ahead and traded Butler right now for. Uh, Josh Richardson and a pick like if we got one young wing back and uh, pick back and then we could just build around that core and then we compete for a decade that would be fine the thing I'm terrified about is keeping both Butler and Tobias and then having no cap and no role players because if you look at the history of wings in our league like if you look at like a guy like Danny Granger Ron Artest Sean Marion Trace McGrady Richard Hamilton Andre Andre Iguodala Luo Dang, Karan Butler, uh, Jamal Mashburn, all these guys were bad when they were 32. And if we give Jimmy Butler five years, 190 million, 
he's not going to be good at 32 and we'll be paying him around $40 million a year. And I think that would close our, um, our championship window before it really opens before Joel and Ben hit their prime. So, wow, man. I'm, good boy. I, good boy. I gotta say, man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so surprised and it's awesome because I know Celtics fans are going to eat this up. You're a Sixer fan. People are going to think you're a fake Celtic fan that I just brought on, oh. but you're legitimately a Sixer fan. And you're actually saying all the things that Celtics fans right now are saying to calm ourselves down. We're like, they can't guard Kyrie. They have no one to guard him. So this is, no. this is interesting. Uh, Dude, I want to talk about this more, but I'm trying to do these quick things. So let's talk again before we have our matchup, I want, if you want to come on. Is there anything yeah, else, though, just quickly, um, like with Fultz, are you are you hoping you can get something for him? Is there anything you think you can get for him? Uh, honestly, no. I just feel bad for the kid. It's clear that he has a mental block. and is. Um, he had a post on Instagram this year, uh, this summer, about uh, like mental health is no joke, panic attacks are serious, all this stuff. And it was reported that his mom didn't like it and made it take it made him take it down. Yeah. So I think he has bad people around him getting bad advice, and their just refusal to admit that it's a mental problem has stopped us from addressing the core problem. And I just don't think it's going to get better in Philly. So I don't think he's going to play again for us. But I, I just think it's sad, and I think we'll probably have to end up trading him for a guy like Deadmond and just basically get nothing for him. Interesting, man. Well, yeah. Let's talk again some other time. Appreciate you coming on. All right, thanks, All right, man. man. Thanks a lot. Bye. Hey, how's it going? Hey, man. Red Red Sox eat poop. What a what a username you have, my man. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Big big time. I think you could guess what uh what MLB team I'm a fan of. <laughs> <laughs> Not that the rest will let people know you're you are a Nuggets fan, actually, right? For the NBA. I am. I am. I am. Big time Denver Nuggets fan. Uh, moved to uh, the Midwest when I was in middle school, so I started to uh, adopt a Midwest team around that time. Where are you from originally, then? Uh, New York, I'm originally okay. from. So that's that's why the uh, the Yankees fan comes in there. You gotcha, know. gotcha. Uh, yeah, we grew up watching the New Jersey Nets with Jay Kidd, uh, Kerry Kittles, Kmart, VC, all those guys. But you're uh, a Nuggets but fan, then, though, huh? <laughs> yeah. Then then they kind of shipped off to Brooklyn, and and I I uh, more picked up, uh, and they they traded away my favorite players. You know, Jay Kidd left, uh, VC left, so I. I started to look for other outlets, and uh, the Nuggets were there. Awesome, man. So I think I forget how you came across my podcast, but I remember you saying you want to be on, and I'd like to get you on probably in March before the uh, Nuggets matchup. But yeah. trade deadline's coming up. I want to hear like what's on your mind with this trade deadline from a yeah. from a Nuggets yeah. perspective. Well, it's been crazy just watching the league. You know, uh, we had the big one today this morning with Tobias Harris, and now uh, just came out. I'm watching the Bucks game right now against the Wizards with. Uh, Otto Porter Jr. now on the Bulls, so that was a that was a surprising move. I thought I didn't see that one coming. Um, but as a Nuggets fan, we, we have the uh, I guess the the nice little window to just watch through right now. Uh, I don't think they're gonna be making any big trades. Um, looks like there was a, a little rumor from a, uh, a reporter. I don't think he's a Nuggets beat reporter or anything like that. But he mentioned Gary Harris maybe with the emergence of Malik Beasley. Um, and Beasley's been playing great, and, and he could probably start for a few teams in the league, but I don't know if they're going to be trying to ship Gary Harris away right now because his value is probably at a low. Uh, he's been hurt for half the year. He's been on and off playing. When he plays, he, he, he has some good games. He has some bad games, but uh, it's obvious he's not totally healthy. Um, but I think if, if the Nuggets were to make a move, uh, it would be involving Gary, and we'd probably look for – just a small forward, get a little wing depth. Uh, that's what the Nuggets really struggle with when when they're in these games. I know they're playing the Nets right now, um, and and they don't really have to match up too too tough. They don't have too tough of a matchup on the small forward position. But when you get guys like the Raptors or uh, anybody that has a Kawhi Leonard type player or a, even a Giannis, uh, the Nuggets do struggle to match up. They have Paul Millsap that kind of helps anchor their defense, but he, he's not as shifty as uh, like the, the Kawhis or the Giannis's. And uh, I, I think that's where the Nuggets would probably look for some help. Um, I was talking to a couple guys online and they brought up maybe uh, looking at the Raptors. And if we were to uh, trade with them, it'd be like a Gary Harris for uh, OG Ananubi, um, plus a couple other throw-ins like Adele on the right. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, 
as a Nuggets fan, obviously I have a, a little bias and I love Gary Harris. He's yep. the man. Ha- um, having a little bit of a down season, it looks like. So last couple is, of seasons, we're shooting lights out, shooting for like 40%, and now he's shooting for, from three and shooting like 31% this season. So. Yeah, yeah. So and, you guys are turning I, on him that. I didn't even realize that. See, this tells you how, uh, you know, perspective of fans who aren't in that community, like I didn't even realize that Nuggets fans were out on Harris at this point. No, and, and I, I don't think we are. I think that was just something that was brought up. I don't think that's a serious uh, a serious piece there. I wouldn't want to trade. If, if I had it my way, we wouldn't touch anything on our roster right now. Uh, I love Gary Harris when he's healthy. The only reason I think he's kind of having a down year uh, is just because he's been on and off hurt, um, just been having issues. And, and when he can stay healthy and consistent, you know, he's a, a big time threat, a great three and D def- or a three and D player. But uh, again, he is a, a shooting guard and, and he's a little undersized as a shooting guard. Um, and, and he kind of, I wouldn't say he has a similar style to Jamal Murray, uh, or Malik Beasley, but he does fit that kind of undersized, uh, uh, guard that the Nuggets have, but that works with Jokic running the, the helm. So quickly, give me an update on, uh, well, first of all, what's going on with Isaiah, our boy, Isaiah Thomas, Isaiah, Isaiah, you know, that, that's a, that's a bit of mixed feelings too. I'd love if he could come back and, and really contribute. Um, but you know, we haven't heard much about him on, on the injury side of things. Uh, in the beginning of the year, it was said that he was looking at a December, maybe January return. Uh, now come February, uh, we, we've heard a couple peeps out of him, but, but nothing big. Um, but it does seem like he, he's had a, a positive influence on our locker room. Uh, Monte Morris is a guy who's stepped up, uh, running that true point guard position, kind of kind of different than what we're used to seeing with Jamal Murray, who came into the league more as a shooting guard. Uh, and and although Jamal's really evolved this year and, and can take over as a point guard, we haven't really seen that that true point guard position until Monte Morris. And I think Isaiah might might be uh, helping in that that role to kind of mold Monte into the player that he's becoming. Awesome. Um, we're rooting but, for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we all are. I think we all are. Uh, if we could give him, you know, 15 minutes a game uh, and it wouldn't eat into our our young guys, that's the only problem at this point I think that the Nuggets will struggle with with Isaiah. Uh, what Isaiah are we going to see, you know? Um, if if we're going to see Celtics Isaiah, you're going to want to play him 20 minutes a night at least. Uh, if we're seeing Cavs Isaiah, you know, that's, that's a right. little tougher. Right, right. Uh, yeah, you guys want Terry Rozier for him? A lot of our fans here want to get rid of Terry Rozier. <laughs> I've I've heard I've heard uh, of some rumblings. Point. <laughs> um, I think I think if we were to trade Isaiah, it'd just be a quick dump, second round pick, get yeah. it over with, uh, move some money around, and that would be that. Because um, I I think Nuggets fans right now we we just love our roster. Right. Uh, we we have we have really good guard depth, but again that that position that we're a little weak in is the wing. Uh, cause even Barton, he's six foot five, six foot six. Uh, and he, he doesn't have too much meat on his bones. You know, he moves more like a guard than he does a, a forward. Um, so, so it, it'll, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I, I do think the Nuggets are going to lay off this, this, uh, deadline. trade deadline, but yeah. I could also be totally wrong. <laughs> okay. Last thing, uh, Michael Porter Jr. What are your expectations oh, yeah. of him? Cause that's one guy I'm really curious about. We, we already know he's going to be better, better than Michael Jordan, LeBron James. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man, let's leave it out that. I'll, I'll talk to you yeah, again before yeah. we, we meet up, all right? Uh, then hey, self explain, like I guess. Plan. All right, Thanks, talk, man, talk to you later. Me. Yeah, bye. Hello. Alex, what's up, man? Hey, how's it going? Long time. Yeah, so I'm doing this uh, this podcast where I'm just calling up lots of people. We know each other in person, but you are a hardcore NBA fan. I don't know which team you particularly rep at this point, though, because you're from Seattle. So what's your favorite team you're going to call it? By default, I guess I'm choosing the Blazers. I grew up in Nebraska and moved to Seattle about five or six years ago. So I kind of missed out on the Sonics and I've never really had a team. So uh, I'm choosing the Blazers. All right, man. So with this trade deadline, like what's on your mind? I... I want the Blazers to make a move. Um, bad taste in my mouth last year with the first round uh, 04 loss to the Pelicans. So I just I just think it's time to to break up the Lillard McCollum core. I think I think McCollum is a good trade piece, and this is the pipiest of pipe dreams. But 
I think a McCollum package for Anthony Davis would oh, wow. be the best. So you want them to do that? Wow, yeah. Yeah, I don't care if they can't re-sign him. Just send a 50-cent piece and a couple, I don't know, a quarter and a couple dimes for Anthony Davis. And then uh, if they can't re-sign him, just flip him the summer. Certainly works on the trade machine. I think that the Pelicans are going to be looking for something more than McCollum. Not to say McCollum's not great, <laughs> but I think they have their yeah. eyes on a, on a major, major, you know, massive package, so... Yeah. Anything else that you're thinking about with the NBA right now? Anything you're keeping an eye on? The more drama and nonsense that comes out of uh, La La Land, the better. <laughs> I do not want Anthony Davis on the Lakers. I I just don't want LeBron to get his way for once. You know, I want to see him win with these young kids. If you had a preference between him going to Boston, New York, or Lakers, what do you want to see happen? Um, Man, I think Boston might be the one. I, I, I have this, uh, this vision now of Durant, Kyrie, and Zion in New York, and I just said I don't want him in LA, so I guess Boston by default. Right, Congratulations we'll, we'll, we'll on Anthony Davis. We'll take it. All right, <laughs> All right man. Well, thanks for touching base. Anything else you want to talk about? I'm just doing these like rapid fire calls. No, nah, man. Let's watch some basketball soon. All right, let's do it. I'll talk to you later. Wait, which movie are you seeing? I'm uh, going to see Bohemian Rhapsody. Ugh, it was all right. I mean, really? It was it's, okay. It's a little late to be seeing that movie. Uh, I'm seeing it at my buddy's house. Uh, oh, okay. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a Queen fan. <laughs> All right. Good music. That's, you know, yeah. honestly, it's good music. Right, cool. Good lip syncing. You'll enjoy it. <laughs> All right. All I right. can handle that. All right. Talk to you later, man. See ya. Bye. What's up? Cousin Mike. Yeah. I'm recording a podcast. Oh, yeah. How's it going? It's good, man. I just want to know, is there anything about this trade deadline you're keeping an eye on? <laughs> there is. There is not, actually. All right. I'll talk, uh, to, I'll talk to you later then. <laughs> You got it. All right. Love you, buddy. Love you, too. Bye. <laughs> Hello? BDM860. And you pronounced it the right way. I don't know. It's kind of a weird thing. People could pronounce that anyway. So I might say 860. Said it the way I pronounce it, which is important. <laughs> <laughs> so you and I have been chatting with on Celtics blogs, you know, for probably 12 years. And you said that if I ever needed mm-hmm. a podcast guest, I could hit you up. Well, the trade deadline's right now. And I just wanted to know if there was anything on your mind that you're thinking about right now. Well, I just think the West Coast standings, the bottom of the West Coast conference at seven, eight, nine seating is super interesting. Uh, Celtics picks, you know, they have they have the Sacramento pick, they have the LA Clippers pick, if it's in the playoffs, and you know how that's going to go down. We just saw Tobias Harris move. Yep. People think that's going to put the the Clippers out of the playoffs. You know, I don't know. The Clippers are tough. Doc Rivers, he had two years in Boston where, you know, it was 06 and 07. And that that was really it for losing records. People forget when he started, um, he was coach of the year in 2000, taking a Magic team that everybody thought would tank because uh, Penny Hardaway just signed and traded away. Um, They lost Nick Anderson, Horace Cram, all their vets from the team the previous year. Daryl Armstrong was their best player, took them to a 500 record. Everyone thought they would tank. I mean, that's similar to what I see the Clippers with now, where, you know, back then they had Daryl Armstrong. Doc had Daryl Armstrong. Now he, has, he still has Lou Woody, Patrick Beverly. I have some tough players that I think he'd get 500 ball out of them. I agree with you. That's uh, It's going to be interesting because them getting rid of Tobias Harris is probably going to push them out of the playoffs and it's probably going to push the Kings into the playoffs, which kind of screws us on both ends because our Clippers pick is top 14 protected this year. It's top 14 protected next year. And that Kings pick, obviously we want it to be in the lottery. So yeah, that trade didn't work out for us on any any end. It hurts our draft picks, our competition with Philly. It's going to be a tough one. Anything else that's on your mind with this trade deadline? You know, the, the Kings. I... I, I wrote a post back in September about them. No one saw it because, you know, you know how it is. You post something and no one else posting the thread. And just yep. But the Kings, I mean, I'm, I'm shocked how good they're doing. I, I wrote a post saying there's nothing to worry about. Like ESPN, if you look at all the preseason rankings, ESPN ranked them 29 and three different polls they did in the summer. NBA.com ranked in 29. Yep. CBS.com ranked in 29 this summer. Yep. They had no players in anyone's top 100 ranking. Then, except one poll, CBS.com had Marvin Bagley 
at number 91, and that, that was it for any Kings players getting mentioned. <laughs> and then I went on this long spiel about, don't worry, this is what happened. I'm going to read some things that have happened in relation to the last time they made the playoffs. The Seattle Supersonics exi- existed more recently than the Kings made the playoffs. The <laughs> Oklahoma, That's crazy. Or the Oklahoma City Hornets existed more recently than the Kings had made the playoffs. Right. You've probably been the blockbuster video more recently than the Kings have made the playoffs. MySpace was the most visited website in the world more recently than the Kings have made the playoffs. The first iPhone was launched more recently than the Kings have made the playoffs. <laughs> Shows like ER and Sopranos have released episodes, new episodes more recently than the Kings have made the playoffs. <laughs> Kevin Willis who played against Kareem and Bill Walton. He played against them in games. He's played in the NBA more recently than the Kings <laughs> have made the playoffs. I, I, thought, I felt true. so good about it. It's true. Here. And here they are. Here they are. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> so uh, a watch bomb, I guess, probably a, a minute or two before I record this, is that the Cavs are sending Burks to the Kings. The Rockets are sending Brandon Knight, Marquise Chris, and a protective first to Cavaliers. Uh, not a big deal. The one trade I was worried about from the Kings perspective is them adding um, Harrison Barnes. So I was worried about the Kings potentially adding Harrison Barnes because they were trying to go after him uh, a, a few weeks ago. They were mentioning that Harrison Barnes added to that team is pretty dangerous as well. And that could make them a little bit even more likely to make the playoffs. So that's something I'm keeping an eye on. Good point about the Kings. <laughs> All year, it's been like the tough stretch of the schedule is coming up for them. And here they are. What are they? Three games above 500 with, yep. you know, less than 30 to go. That's, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. That's just it goes to show you that young teams, they can turn the corner pretty quickly. And it looks like the Kings have started to turn that corner and um, they might make the playoffs. But of course, the Lakers are still behind them. So you got to assume the Lakers are going to eventually leapfrog them into that probably eighth seed or above. So, well, with the Lakers, it's interesting. One, you know, I'm a LeBron hater, but I, I, the guy's one of the greatest players of all time. You know, I want him to fail, but I can't deny his greatness. Yep. And he's – the Lakers are 21-15 and 15 with him this year, including last night's game. But it's interesting with that blowout the other night to Indiana, you were – I mean, you mentioned this, and I had the same thoughts when the, when the Anthony Davis rumors came out. Like, you know, the Boston can't trade for him until July. Yep. And, you know, you worry about how this is going to affect guys like Tatum and Brown knowing they're going to get shipped out in the summer. Yep. And it's like, maybe we just saw that same thing happen with the Lakers here where the, the young guys, they don't care anymore. Yeah, they're tuning out. Um, this might fall, fall apart for the Lakers. While the Chiefs, they've been able to hold together for the couple games that's come out since the, since the, since the rumors. Yep. And more bad news for our picks then. So, uh, yeah, man, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. <laughs> I want to talk to you again later uh, at, for a more extended conversation, but I'm trying to do these quick yeah, ones. So. None, of this, none of this cameo, none of this cameo <laughs> I want a, you feature, want All right. a feature appearance on the blog. All right, man. I'll <laughs> so talk. I can stay out there on the ground floor. We'll do it. All right, <laughs> All right man. I'll talk to you later. All right. All right have a good one. Thanks. Yo, what's going on? Smash, smash, smash. That's your name on Reddit there, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kai the Axe Wielding Hitchhiker. I think you had said that you wanted to be on the podcast at some point. I think you'd heard mine, maybe? Yeah, definitely don't mind helping out. That's for sure. So the trade deadline, what's on your mind? Anything. Just probably not Tobias Harris or Davis, because that's all anyone wants to talk about. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Uh, Yeah, obviously there's the uh, Mike Conley stuff that's going on right now and the Marcus Gasol deal that just will not go over the one-yard line. Right. But uh, the thing I'm kind of interested in around the Anthony Davis stuff, because the way the current landscape is of the NBA, I feel like there's a lot of marginal moves going on, but like nothing that really affects the long term, like, you know, contenders of the NBA. So the Anthony Davis thing is just kind of taking over everything. I'm curious to see how much these other front offices out West hate the Lakers because you would think (laughs) conventional wisdom would say if the Lakers can't get a deal done because the Pelicans don't like their young guys, why not try and do a three team trade where maybe you're sending a young guy to another team and that team is sending picks to new Orleans, whatever, but it doesn't even seem like there's any traction at all on that front. And I feel like all anyone ever talks about is 
you know, this is what the Lakers can offer and that's it. But if you're a really smart front office, you should be looking at three or four team trades for Anthony Davis. And I find it so interesting how there is this lack of motivation to engage with the Lakers front office at all from these Western front offices. I mean, yep. it, it seems like there's just a huge log jam. Um, but in regards to us, I'm kind of happy we're not doing anything. Um, you know, I, I like Mook and I like Rozier for for this uh, this playoff run. So I could see know, us, keep... I could see us moving them though. I, I still could think that could be a deadline deal where if we can get I could some definitely peppers. See it. Yep. I could definitely see it for sure. And part um, of me, part of me, I mean, I love Morris. Like today, all the uh, people on Reddit and, and Twitter were trying to say that Morris is better than Tobias Harris. I mean, Morris is having a great season, but part wow. of me, part of me, part of me kind of wants, I mean, part of me kind of wants us to trade him for an asset and then give more minutes to um, Hayward and Brown. So it'll be interesting to see if we do do anything on that front. But you had mentioned um, Gasol and Conley. Are you super nervous about uh, the Raptors getting one of those guys, both the guys? Um, no, not really. Um, especially after what Philly just did with Tobias Harris. I'm a little nervous about that. I don't think I would be more nervous if they got Conley, but I, I don't know. It's tough. I mean, Kyle Lowry adds quite a bit to that team, even though he struggles offensively sometimes. I think Conley can do some of the things he does. It'd be it'd be really interesting. I mean, yeah, I guess they kind of would make me nervous now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, now that I'm speaking it into existence. Yeah, Gasol as well, because I think that was one of the rumors that they were trying to get both Gasol and Conley, which would have been pretty interesting um, for the Raptors there. Yeah, especially moving Jonas Valanciunas, who is dealing with some injuries and He's definitely gotten better in the modern NBA with the, you know, how to defend the space and stuff, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Right now, the East is really starting to look scary at the top. Yep. And, uh, you know, I- I'm glad the Celtics have been on a tear since starting 10 and 10. It doesn't feel like it at times, but I feel like we're getting to, you know, that that level of basketball that we should be getting to this time of year. Yep. But, yeah, like I said, the, the top of the East, I mean, if Conley – or Gasol, or, you know, one of these guys comes to one of those top teams, it, it makes things even more murky, you know, because these guys are just getting added into the team, so you right. have this right. adjustment period, and, how you know, is Tobias Harris going to come in and light a fire under all their, their asses, or is it, I don't know if I can swear, but... Uh, um, no, fuck it, whatever, it doesn't matter, just me. <laughs> nice. Ten right, people well, are going to listen to this. By the time people get to it, the trade deadline will probably be of past, so it's no big deal. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, true. But uh, um, one thing I was talking on the Celtics Reddit podcast, uh, they had were kind enough to invite me on last night. And after the call ended, I was talking to Jackson and he had mentioned, which I hadn't even thought of this. He's like, what if the Raptors aren't really feeling comfortable heading forward and just letting Kawhi walk? Is there a really kind of wild card chance that they might just say, screw it? and trade Kawhi right now, even though they are in the thick of things. It seems crazy, but I wonder if they if they're getting signs that maybe Kawhi is going into Clippers with them filling out, you know, freeing up cap space, then maybe they're gonna do something. And that'll be interesting. I mean if they that seems super, super unlikely, but that's something that I guess on the fringes to keep an eye on. Yeah, I mean at this point, the way the last few years have gone, um really I, I don't think you can rule anything out <laughs> because there are just Anytime you expect something to happen, there's just shit that comes out of left field. Right. So if they do decide to say, hey, we don't think he's going to you know, resign here for some strange reason, that there hasn't been anything to say that he wouldn't, but there also isn't anything to say that he would either. I mean, what kind of haul would they even get for – and what team would be interested? I'm, in like, I'm literally thinking about this for the first time right now, but it's just I'm just wondering. It's like if – what if the Lakers were just talking to Kawhi right now and saying, hey, you know, we'll give you half of our Davis offer for Kawhi, and then LeBron can convince Kawhi wow. to stay. I mean, that's totally out there. I'm not even – it's just out there, but <laughs> – that <laughs> See, and that's what a smart, smart front office should be doing. Yeah. I, I just don't know if Magic and Palenka are that. <laughs> I just, They're just hell-bent on getting Davis. Yeah, and I, like I said, I, I it doesn't seem like there's even any – any kind of attempts obviously there must be but 
like there's not any kind of attempt to try and pull some wacky ass strings so far with less than 20 hours left yep. to say, hey, you know, maybe we got to do more than just what we have. I mean, we got to really pull some crazy stuff here and, and really start digging into the CBA. But yep. I, if they went for Kawhi instead and just got him to resign, I mean, that would be... It'd if be crazy. Late- Nobody would see that coming. Just for this podcast, if I can get this out on time, <laughs> I'd be the only person that mentioned it. But I'm just thinking like when they originally got Kawhi, part of it was like people were thinking well yeah why don't you just like get him and you can potentially just trade him and yeah get free up DeRozan anyways I don't know if they even really wanted to keep DeRozan long term so it's like why not just get Kawhi and maybe you can rebuild around some crazy package that you're going to get from the Celtics or something at the trade deadline it's something that is super unlikely to happen but it's an interesting point and I got to credit Jackson for bringing it up um, on that podcast after we recorded it so yeah, man. Anything yeah, it's else? something that gets talked about a lot, I feel like, with these superstar trades, but never actually happens. So yeah. if it did, like, you know, trade for the guy and then trade him at the next segment, whatever that deadline or summertime is, that would be, I think if you're the Lakers, that would be a great move after all this Davis bullshit that's been going on. Right. Or if I'm the Lakers, I'm just floating that out right now as a bullshit possibility. I'm getting Rich Paul to say that. Uh, the Lakers are considering doing this, and then maybe it puts some pressure on the Pelicans to say, wait, wait, wait. True. <laughs> yeah, you got to – I mean, this this is a whole new landscape to the NBA now yeah. with, with players and agents. Now you have a legit player, like, with a rogue agency. I mean, these are things that all these front offices have to start thinking about now. Yeah. Well, anyways, hey, thanks. Uh, I'd like to talk to you again at a more extended conversation, but I've just, I'm just doing these quick bursts. So, yeah, uh, thanks no for coming problem, on. Dude. All right. Yeah, no problem. Good all luck. Right. Yeah, talk to you later. All right, Kitty. It's my wife, Kitty. Say hello. Hello. Kitty, what's what's on your mind with this trade deadline? What? Who who's trading what? <laughs> you got any you got any big trades in mind? The players? Great. Thanks, Kitty. <laughs> uh Kitty and I just did a video together. I just wanted to bring her on because we put together this Gordon Hayward 100% hotter video and it's it's fire, man. This is a fire video. We got 400 views right now, Kitty. People are people are liking it, so thanks for your work on that. I had more in my cat video, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. She put together a cat video at one point that has more views than this, so I guess nobody <laughs> nobody likes me, but they apparently like your work, so congratulations, Kitty. Meow Giannos. Meow Giannos. What my 20,000. 20,000 views of our cat eating at Meow Giano. Well, okay, you know, your 20,000 views is better than my 400, but... All right, thank you, Kitty. Goodbye. Booyah, gotcha. Scott, Scott. <laughs> yeah, howdy, partner. All right, I give you two minutes. What's on your mind with this trade deadline? Two, two minutes, man. We're talking about the Sixers. No, we already did the Sixers. Everyone's talking about the Sixers. Give me something else. <laughs> Oh, oh man um how about ben simmons <laughs> <laughs> still sixers <laughs> yeah give me oh i can't believe you don't want to talk about him though man it's like dude they just went all in for real we just talked about this with jimmy butler and now it's they're going all in with these four do you do wait i just want to know do you really think that they're gonna roll with this these big four guys for the next say three years do you really think they're rolling with these guys that's a big gamble for them uh i was just, actually i just called up a sixers fan and talked to them about it and it was interesting how depressed they were so you're gonna want to listen to this podcast when you when yes, I publish it. yes. He was depressed about it but they're putting themselves in, in a, it's a bit of a gamble but worst case scenario they're still gonna have mb they're still gonna have simmons and then they can have cap space to go after someone else even if butler leaves even if harris leaves and they're gonna be a, a a bitch to deal with in the playoffs. But man, come on, Scott Scott. We've I've talked about this the Sixers too much. Tell me about this the Chicago Bulls trade. Come on, man. This is exciting things. Otto Porter to the Chicago Bulls for Jabari Parker. What the fuck are they thinking? Well, you know, I told you I, I want to trade El Gordo for Otto Porter, so that that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> but what did the Bulls need with Otto Porter Jr.? That's an interesting trade. Yeah, well, you know, I guess let's just go back and talk some side. Uh, it, it's so predictable now, how like when Kyrie takes games off. Like we were just joking about the other day. I said, "Who, who do we got coming up?" And he's like, "Oh, we got the Lakers." It's just the fact is that Ky- Kyrie is just so predictable. He takes off all scrub games now, so he can get ready for Toronto yeah. and drop eighteen assists and, on national television. <laughs> but anyway, but the point is, is that it goes right back to wow. Gordon Hayward's comfortable. Your boy, eighteen points, looking pretty solid. Jason Tatum, what twenty three and seven? 
Um, yeah. Everybody, you know, people just look great without Kyrie. Uh, it's <laughs> I, I don't know, I don't know what to say about our team. A, man. a, lar- it's, it's, a larger we're... rule. I, I do think it's a larger rule when they have a larger rule, they're able to do more. But I think you don't think that Kyrie was told by Ainge that hey, man, just sit it out. We got the trade deadline coming up. We want to try to trade Rozier. So let's get a little bit of sh- last minute showcase in and see what happens. <laughs> No, I think this is all Kyrie all just Kyrie. managing his career. Yeah. Totally. This guy, he, he, I mean, I'll give it to him. He's kind of a genius at it. He's just, he's kind of like the uh, Greg Popovich of players. <laughs> all right, you, man. You know, it's just like, oh, all right, well, that's it. This two that's minutes, it. that's, that's all it, I get. That's all you get. <laughs> uh, okay, I quit. We'll, no, we'll, we'll bring you on. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll talk to you all later. All right, man. we'll catch you again soon. Peace. Right, bye-bye. <laughs> hey. Hey, Apocalypse Meow. Apocalypse Meow. You're a hardcore Seattle Supersonics and Seahawks fan, and I'm trying to call up lots of different fans around the league and get their perspective on this trade deadline. What's your perspective as a Sonics fan on this trade deadline? Fuck the NBA. Fair enough. Good to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Apocalypse. See ya. <laughs> Bye. Can you hear me? John, what's up, man? You know, you know, hanging out. It's the middle of the week, trying not to die in the snowstorm. So you're another, uh, I guess, a former Sonic fan. I have a, a lot of friends who are former Sonics fans. And so who do you identify now as your favorite team? I mean, my favorite team's got to be Golden State. Cause... Oh, God, really? Golden State? <laughs> Come on, they've, they've moneyballed basketball. If you, yeah. don't, if you don't like that, then you're missing out on the whole statistics, the cool, f- fun math behind sports. It is incredibly impressive how they've been able to put together a, an unprecedented team. But all right, man, I'll give you a pass because Sonics fans have been scorned. But really, just come on, come to the Celtics, man. We've got we've got space on the bandwagon. Come to us. I, I love the Celtics, man. I, I, I love Kyrie. I love Al Al Horford. I think Tatum's a little bit overhyped. Oh. Rozier's pretty good. Smart's been killing it. I've been a big <laughs> Morris fan for a long time. Yep. Uh, you know, Tice has been surprisingly decent too. Yeah. Um, honestly, like I, I, I love the Celtics this year. They're one of my favorite teams in the East. Um, Fair enough. Uh, man. Fair enough. If, so, if, 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 I, I like to call out though. There is one team I do hate. I do hate OKC. Like, oh, like yeah, no of course, like, of I, course. I, I wish they they lose every single year, and I'm so happy that they're cursed with Russell uh, uh, with Russ right now. Because although he's talented, although he's really good, I just. I feel bad for Paul George. That is a funny thing about former Sonics fans is that the only two fan bases that were happy about Kevin Durant leaving OKC for Golden State were, you know, Golden State fans and Sonics fans because they're like, fuck OKC, anything to ruin their yeah. chances. <laughs> but anyways, the uh, trade deadline, trade de- deadline just right around the corner. Just Is there anything that's popping up that's, your, that's on your mind right now that you've been curious about or has caught your attention? Yeah, you know, I, I did want to... I, I really liked the Thon Maker move going over to Detroit for Stanley Johnson. Um, I'm not quite sure what Milwaukee was trying to do there. I mean, what what do you think they were trying to trying to get out of that? It's hard to say. I mean, Thon Maker had demanded a trade. <laughs> it was funny. He what demanded is? a trade from a weird position of a guy who's averaging five points, but he's stup- you know he's super young. Um, yeah, he could end up pre- being pretty good. I mean, I think, I think the guy's pretty good. I mean, I, I think Thon Maker's got talent. He just doesn't get a lot of play time. Obviously, you have Jonas in there, and you have. Uh, I mean, they, they've already got a stacked front court. Uh, right. and JD's playing really well for that team, too. But then if he, he's going to go over to Detroit where, you know, I hate to say, but I feel like Griffin is hurt a lot. And I, I feel like uh, Drummond has spent a little bit of time off the court, too. So, I don't know. I think he'll be a really good backup option for them. And, and honestly, Griffin's a great shooter, but I think Thon Maker is potentially just as good of a shooter. Uh, it would be, it'd be interesting if they tried to play all three of them at the same time. Yep. Uh, which would be like an enormous front court, right? like just all 6'11", 6'10", plus guys. Um, but obviously, Thon Maker's got to put on some weight. Yeah, it'll be Stanley interesting Smith. to see if he gets a larger role there. I mean, th- both yeah. those guys are still pretty young. Uh, Stanley Johnson's only 22. Thon yeah. Maker's only 21. So that'll be interesting to see. Thon Maker was only averaging 11, uh, 11 minutes on the Bucks, So yeah. he could have maybe a, a leap if he gets more minutes on another team. Yeah. Something to keep in mind. Is there anything that you're waiting to see with this trade deadline coming up? Something that you're hoping to see happen? I'd be kind of interested to see what happens with Memphis if they actually move Gasol and um, uh, Conley. But honestly, I think Gasol's a little old. I don't know if that's fair. I think he's like, what, 32 or 33? I think he's like 34, actually. Yeah, so yeah, he's just a little old, and he's got that old man game. Like, I feel like the only place he's going to land and really thrive is going to be a system strong team like the Spurs, or maybe even 
Toronto. And I know there's been discussions with trading him to Toronto, but like, I don't think that's a good deal for Toronto. Right. Conley's good, but I, I think they discussed JV and Lowry. Yep. But I think that's that's bad. Like it's just not like it's not a big net gain out of it. I guess. Yeah, it seems like a move that a team would make if they're desperate to convince Kawhi to stay. Hmm. I think that would give them a bit of an upgrade in the season and have the you know more power to go on a run in this playoff that's coming up. But that's it that's the main. I think that's the main motivation behind that at least. You think so? I mean, I I don't think it makes them substantially better. Like, is Gasol that much better than JV? And Gasol's is, really good. Yeah, I mean, he is despite his age. I mean, I I know he's good. I just, I mean, I I think he's better than JV, but I don't think he's like a big difference. And then to sort of disrupt the the good flow that they've got going right now, that's pretty tough. Like, I, you know, I, it's tough to imagine that that would be really really good for them. I mean, they've backed out at this point. So yeah, yeah. Unless, it, unless they do something. Happen. Yep. Yeah, if they do something to make it really sweet, maybe. But. It could still happen. And it's going to be interesting. All these major teams in the East who are making major moves right now to see how that chemistry would play out if, if Toronto actually makes that move. Obviously, Philly's going to have a lot of chemistry uh, hurdles to get over with all those guys. So, man, a lot of people trying to make moves for this wide-open oh, yeah. Eastern Conference run. So, yeah. Yeah, that Philadelphia team is looking awesome with Harris in there. I'm a big believer. When he was uh, with – I think he was when he was with the Magic. Yep. No, I thought he was a great match against LeBron. You know, like yeah, everybody needed a, a LeBron semi stopper, and I thought he was great at that. Um, but he, he's having a breakout year, and he gets traded. Like, yeah, yeah. Did, did, was he on, is he on a, con- on a contract year? Yeah, it was his last year, so they were going to lose him probably. Uh, and I think the, Clip, the Clippers are trying to free up cap space to make a run at a major star like Kawhi. So yeah, oh. it makes sense why they would get that uh, Miami pick. And then from Philly's perspective, they're just getting a guy that can help them going to run right now so yeah all right man, well thanks i'm gonna call up someone else, someone else now i appreciate it yeah cool i'll talk to you later all right bye bye there it is the kings are trading justin jackson and zach randolph to the mavericks for harrison barnes i literally just brought this up and here it is so that's pretty funny hey bro so i'm saving the best for last here saving the best for last here's ryan trask he's the lead singer of niantic uh he's stepping out of the recording studio right now and he's a hardcore los angeles lakers fan how you feeling about this trade deadline, Ryan? Oh, Nelly. All right. Um, my main concern is that the Lakers have kind of painted themselves into a corner here. I, uh, I'm concerned that with the package that was put together for Anthony Davis, including all of the bullshit, all of the picks, all of the, you know, the, the, the uh, Jimmy Butler, Daryl Morey level of huge overpay package like i understand someone said on 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 laker twitter a couple days ago this is a dude you build a statue for so of course you overpay which is true but my concern is that that's the deal the lakers are going to not be able to close this deal because the pelicans and basically all small market owners just refuse to deal with the lakers at all which again is a pain yourself in the corner because the lakers and i'm going to go full exceptionalist here have Really, you know, been we we've, we've all been so spoiled. I'm born and raised here with winning my whole life, uh, <laughs> and 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 even farther back. So now no one wants to do deals with us. Meanwhile, the Lakers and a couple other teams subsidize every small market. So that's not going to be an issue down the road, I hope. Um, but so that's two ways that kind of pan themselves into a corner here. And all the Pelicans have to do is say, no, screw you. We're not going to do what Rich Paul and, and Anthony want. And we're just going to wait until Danny Ainge, who is just the smarmiest. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, just uh, he's just going to pick up the phone and probably find a way to get Anthony Davis without giving up Jason Tatum. Which, uh, that's going to be really difficult to do. Danny Ainge is a great GM, but that's going to be hard to do. <laughs> he he is, and he is as smarmy as they come. But somehow, I think that. They're waiting for Jason Tatum, but as a screw you to the Lakers, they might find a way to do a deal without him. Could it go either way? That would be cool. Like I get it, but like the only thing that would make me happier than 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 getting him tomorrow is if he goes to the Celtics and still comes to L.A. They'll build a statue for him the next day. <laughs> you mean he after free agency? After free agency? Yeah, yeah. in twenty twenty, <laughs> if he caught, if he if he says I'm leaving the Celtics. I've screwed over the Pelicans and the Celtics to come to L.A. Screw you all. New dynasty time. Reset button. 
LeBron can play 15 minutes a night till he's 40, get the scoring record, and we'll probably win three out of five titles. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was going to ask you a few quick questions because uh, I don't want to take up yeah. too much of your time. So the first question I'm going to ask you is this. Is there really any price that is too much for the Lakers to pay? And the reason I ask that is because I was looking at your guy's salary cap, and it's actually in your, it seems to be in your best interest to actually shed all of your salary so that you can get Davis and LeBron and then still have room to add a third guy. So do you really care if you're giving up late firsts and giving up Ball and Kuzma and Ingram if the ultimate goal is to have a big three of LeBron? My bias is to keep it Brandon Ingram. I've always been high on Brandon Ingram since he was in college, and, and, and you and I have talked about this before. I do not watch a lot of college ball, but I made an exception for him. Yep. I don't know... If his ceiling is Lamar Odom, if his ceiling is people, everyone loves to say that he reminds so much of KD, which I guess is possible, but like that will still take years. He's got to fill out. KD, you know, was very gifted with scoring and his footwork in his early years, and then became kind of this defensive plus player that he is today. Um, but yeah, obviously you want to keep I, him. You want to keep him, but. I, you give up that I'd for the Davis. I because I think he becomes. I give up the I. I give. Up, I would. I'm hesitant to want to give up the I or Zo because they're already plus defensive players. Right. If we have to give up the two of them and Kuzma to get Anthony Davis, I think it's worth it because there's still a decent chance that in the in the off season we could pry either Clay, which is just wishful thinking, I think, but, or or more likely Chris Middleton. Yep. The other thing that drives me crazy is why no one's conceived of a third deal, a third team to get in on this deal. They're not going to be able to get Bradley Beal, but that would be sick. Yeah. Bradley Beal on the Pelicans would actually be really great. Like they could even trade for John Wall and then have John Wall and and uh, next year, obviously, and and uh, Drew Holiday. That yeah. would be a defensive monster of a backcourt. The yeah. Godfather offer isn't the offer that you can necessarily make yourself. You get a third team involved, all of a sudden there's another key piece that's coming, and maybe someone injured like Porzingis or or John Wall. Yeah. But I mean that ship sailed. But like that would have been the way to go. And again, no one wants to take Majinka's fucking phone calls. Well, we don't want to deal with you because all of our players want to play for you anyway. Well. S- second question I have for you. That all makes sense. Um, looking at the package that you guys have and imagining a package that the Celtics could come up with that does not include Jason Tatum, do you think they're capable of doing that? So just to keep in mind, <clears throat> seconds before oh, I called you, second, seconds before I called you, uh, the Sacramento Kings made a trade for Harrison Barnes. So that pick's kind of fucked. It's going to probably was, be... I saw that was rumored popping up earlier just today. Happened. I saw just that. happened. That's a great trade for Sacramento. That's great. I love Harrison. I love the Kings. Yeah. So a lot of people listening to this, most of people listening to this are Celtics fans, so it's curious to get your perspective. Is there any package built around Jalen Brown and all of our picks, and maybe even Gordon Hayward, that you think can trump you guys? If they're not going to take, if they're not going to take, you know, the money for you know productive young guys or KCP, they're not going to take the money that 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 the Celtics have sunk into Gordon Hayward. Well, I really <laughs> have always loved his game. Yeah, I've always loved Hayward's game. There's what still two and a half years left on that deal. Sure. And he's played, and he's played, you know, maybe replacement level. I want to make sure I say this nice and clearly. My my Twitter is yes Trask, so that with the Celtics fan, when the Celtics fans at me for saying what I'm about to say, uh, um, like I said, I'm very high on Brandon Ingram. I'm not stoned out of my mind high on Brandon Ingram, but I did go on uh, Basketball Reference and do uh, year to date comparison on him versus Jason Tatum, and Jason Tatum is. I think like 2.9 win shares and Brandon's like 0.9. I, I'm pretty sure I'm wrong about those. Um, <laughs> that was kind of my next question I, is I, how did you see Jason Tatum stacking up with all your assets? Because some people believe that he is a blue chipper and beats all of your guys. Those are win shares 48. That's the bottom row, the advanced stats down there. That's like win shares 48. That's an important stat for sure. But in terms of the, not just the counting stats, because I, I just can't wait for the first app to come in where it's some Celtics fan saying, oh, well, Ryan just used a counting stat, stupid Lakers fan strikes again. <laughs> but, like, not just in terms of the counting stats, but just in terms of, like, the, the, the general, like, overall, like, some of the mid-range advanced stats, they're comparable. Like, Jason obviously is a currently a better player than Brandon, and, and I think that he's got a, a even higher potential as a defender possibly than Brandon does. Mm-hmm. But they're not that dissimilar. <laughs> yes, Jason is, you know, much closer to being an all-star, but, like, yeah. We're talking about guys who both average 25 and 5 a night. Uh, Brandon hurts the team, you know, big picture more on defense probably. But, I mean, they both have great basketball IQ. Brandon's might be better at his pedigrees being from Kinston. I've always, you know, uh, that's where Jerry Stackhouse is from. Uh, 
Uh, yeah. What's his name? Reggie Bullock went to high school there. Like, that's a great pedigree. Like, so his basketball IQ is top notch. Jason's game is great too. Like, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna seriously knock Jason Tatum. But yeah, man, that uh, that'll be interesting to see how that that all plays out. Um, I appreciate you coming on. Anything else major? Hey, I mean, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Anything else major you want to talk about before we go? Yeah, go Dodgers. Go Rams. <laughs> all right man thank you ryan trash appreciate it yes trash Dude, on anytime, twitter if you guys wanna... all right thanks a lot see ya sure yeah thanks thank you so much all right that was ryan trask he's a laker fan i think that was pretty fun i got to talk to a lot of people um again i go by larbird 33 on uh, twitter and reddit and you can subscribe to this youtube channel i'm putting up a lot of different videos having fun with it some are kind of stupid little uh, meme type videos some of them are podcasts But uh, yeah, subscribe to my channel, uh, like these videos and share them out. And it's going to be interesting to see how obsolete this podcast gets as soon as I post it. There's going to probably be a lot of more, uh, a lot more news that I'm going to miss out on, but we'll see where this goes. Thanks.